going to show you just how easy it is to machine a solid model in EasyCam. First, let's consider where you're going to set your X, Y, Z, zero out at the machine. I want to align my world UCS to that location. Maybe you've used an edge finder and picked up the upper left hand corner. Or maybe you've used the dial indicator and trammed the bore. Well, I'm going to show you both cases. We're going to select world UCS on geometry, select only circles, and snap to the center of a bore. Or select world UCS three points, use snap to all, and pick the upper left hand corner. Let's focus machining on all of these pockets. I'm going to create a face boundary curve to find the boundary of each pocket. Notice I'm selecting the bottom of the pocket and I have verified check so I can select multiple faces at a time. Each of these pockets are at different depths. EasyCam will automatically calculate the depth of each curve for machining. Cycle type is pocketing. You can choose a tool from an extensive tool library EasyCam has established for you. You can modify those tools to place values such as tool number, RPM, feed rates, so that when that tool is selected, the fields are automatically updated, or you can create your own library. We also have a feeds and speeds calculator that's determined based on the stock material or the tool material, or I should say, and the tool material. The depth of cut is also determining the feeds and speeds. A depth of zero is telling EasyCam to look at the depth of the curve. Now I need to select multiple curves for that operation. Now over here, we have an open pocket. Currently, it's machining this curve as a pocket. I want to tell it that this side is open. So I select my curve, go to motion record, select the edge, and check that it's open. Now my toolpath is extended beyond the boundary and there's a square denoting that fact. Next I'm going to machine the right hand side that step on the end. I'll create a new curve. Choose a contouring cycle. We'll use the same tool. The depth, let's see, the depth is automatic. You can choose either automatic or use a depth of zero. It's going to look at the Z surface or XYZ zero in this case. Uh, zero, surface is zero and figure out where the curve is located. The tool is tangent to the end of the curve. We have a nice feature called an open lead. And the tool is extended beyond the edge of the curve. Now I need to tell it that there's stock to be removed. I'm going to use check distance, snap to the center of a line or arc. Gives me my value down at the bottom. D for distance. That's copied to the clipboard. I can go to total stock and simply paste that there. Half inch tool will step every eighth of an inch. The graphics, if you note, they update as you select the field. We're going to use connect by directional.
Now we have a solid model, so we can compare the machining to the model to find out if we have extra stock or if we've gouged the part. You do that by selecting Create and Uncut Solid. Red is for stock, green is cut to size, yellow would be a gouge. So we notice that we have to clean up the corners in each of these pockets. The half inch tool was just too large. So I'm going to click on pockets in my list box. I'm going to go to machining, create an uncut boundary. It determines where the material was remaining in those corners. Tool number two, 125. We use a smaller step. Calculate. Next, we'll do some hole recognition. Easy Cam found all of the holes and all of the same size, made the curve from the pattern. I'm going to use a tap tool here, so I'm going to double click the curve and it brings up a curve machining wizard. Select tap tools. There's a very good library of all the different tap sizes. We'll use a half inch 20. Now notice when I selected that in the wizard, I get the spot drill, tap drill, and the tap itself. Now in the tap drill, you'll notice that there's a plus value uh, in this field. What that's doing is it's telling you no matter what the depth is, add that dimension to the depth of the curve, accommodating for the drill tip angle. With Verify All, you get an estimated machine time. We'll do a deep hole cycle. It gives me my path curve. It's telling me the diameter is 0.393 there. If I put in a drill tip angle of 118 degrees, notice when I hit auto, it adds the drill tip depth for me. Now I'm going to show you how to contour the outside of the part. I'm going to choose this face to get the boundary curve. Select the machining curve.
surface is zero. There's my depth for the profile pass. I'm going to put in a negative stock allowance so the tool goes beyond the edge of the material by 30 thousandths. Our tool starts and ends here. I have options so that I can ramp onto the part. I can also choose a different start and end point. So let's say I want to start the curve at the middle of this line. I go to my curve editing feature and I say curve start and end. Snap to the middle. We'll add a lead in and lead out. and an overlap so that we don't start and stop at the same point but go beyond when we're leading off. failed to put in 90 degrees here but I'm going to lead in with a ramp on the end of the lead and there we see now we'll machine this pocket that has an open floor so I'm going to select that curve surface. I just need to pick on the screen, the bottom of the pocket here, paste that value. Then to find out the depth, I just change to incremental. Select the bottom to the top of the pocket. And give it a negative Z allowance. Now if I want to change the order of any of these operations, I can select the operation and use the left and right arrow keys on my keyboard. If I choose to eliminate an operation, I can just right mouse click on it in the list box. Verify all. and the holes were left out of the machining process. This concludes machining a 2D solid model.